Yeah. And through this roof, which is, well, it was marked off in the catch, you can still get through the top of it. Inside, there's like, there's about 10 crates total lining the walls. They're pretty hefty, big things. Most of them are sealed, but there's one of them that's directly to your side, which you can see is like already like been pried open. None so far. Maybe some ahead, but none right now. All right. Yeah, so that's what you guys know about. There's about 10 crates, pretty like middling to large size, but something that unless they're exceptionally heavy, a person could carry. Wait, wait, before before you actually, yeah, no, actually, he has to come down for this to work. Um, so I'm thinking, I have an idea for this, guys. So one person goes up using like our chain idea, and then we wrap the chain around uh, the crates, like in a way that can like hold it up safely like the double wrap type thing then like you guys gen like whoever's down there gently lowers it down and the next the other person gets the next crate ready and we keep on doing that and then i feel like we could like get all the crate stuff you're not gonna do it what do you mean which part i think either it's really risky or wait why are you not talking uh, he's you th can he talk out loud i'm saying well it's a good idea, but I, I'm not climbing there. I'm not good. No, I'm climbing. climbing. Neither. He, he, like he's, he like puffs out his chest. I'm climbing, and it's like, and if I fall, you guys will catch me. And he like looks at you guys, just like you better fucking catch me. I think James and Mac have that well under control. But I, I can think psychic. While they are doing I can that, psychic. we need the psychic. I think while. Because if I'm about to fall, I can catch myself with the chain. And he like looks at you, just like. Like, nodding, like, see, I'm smart. <laughs> well, good for you. Uh, and I'm like, while we are doing that, I think I am somewhat trained in bureaucracy, so I'm gonna carefully check that left route to the, into that administrative area. Maybe somebody left some papers or anything that will uh, say what happened here or which cell was here last time. Yeah, maybe when you get the supply catch down and if it has anything like that in it, you can check that, but at the moment it doesn't like seem like there's a big manifesto on the wall of and here is the last thing that happened in the area. Not on the wall, you mentioned that when we like at the entrance there were three routes and you said that to the left route is to administrative area. More the like employee area, but yeah, if you go back there, there might be, like, some stuff of some kind. Like, maybe, like, some records of transport. But it's not going to be, like... And then this group of rebels came in and stashed all the stuff here. It's more going to be, like, five years ago, we just got another shipment of fuel. Six years ago, got a shipment of fuel. And then it's going to be, like, something fairly recent where it says, well... We're shutting down and moving out. The whole area's getting evacuated. But there might be something beyond that. Don't know yet until you check. Yeah, I'm gonna... Uh, nevertheless, I'm gonna check that. Just, oh, so you're gonna leave us? I'm just call me out when something happens so I can patch you up. Alright, my character's just like, like, arms out like, wait. Alright, whatever. Let's go. And he, like, wraps himself up in the chain and then he's like, pull me up. And he also starts climbing the chain to, like, go faster. Yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. What is this? Yeah, stacking a uh, staircase about 30 feet high as possible, it would take quite a while to do. And it would be really, really visibly obvious if anyone ever checked on it. 
It is something you could do, though, yeah. <laughs> I just just standing there wrapped in chains. Pull me up, guys. He he's he's like he he like has like little like the belt straps, and instead there's like a chain going through it. <laughs> he's just like pull me up. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'm late. It's not risky. Like I, if we need to, I can use psychic stuff to like catch myself, like catch the chain, and that'll carry me. So I'll be like, I don't know, things could work. Anyways, so I guess the chain would be like an assist, or is it like its own thing to like bring me up? It's it's not really a check or anything, since I know how hard it is to lift someone up using a kind of basic pulley, so it's not really that difficult, especially if you awesome. have two people doing it. So okay. the only the fun happens when you start trying to bring stuff down. Well, we can. I said we wrap it in the chain. The person stays up there, and then we'd like. All right. Well, what, what do I see? What, so when I see the crates, when I get up there in the elevator, uh, I want to like pop some of them open to see like what's what's going to be important. Like what should probably be the first thing we take. Yeah. Well, like I mentioned, there's ten crates. Nine are sealed. One of them's already been opened. What's in the open I, one? Yeah. Yeah. So like, let's let's get a bit more detail as you describe this. So like. The crate's, like, sitting there. You can see, like, it's been popped open and it's on the side. From where you are, like, in the elevator, you can just see that it's kind of packed with all of this um, straw and stuff. All right. Beyond that, like, it looks like it's kind of empty. All right. Well, um, maybe when we... Okay, so I'm going to open up one of the other crates. Like, the, the nearest crate to that one I open up. Yeah. This one, it's... um. You can see the supply crate. It's been packed with supplies. It's probably got somewhere around 50 supplies in it total. What What are supplies? Ration packs. Oh, okay, great. Uh, yep, so I, I uh, while I'm up there in the train chapter on me, I unwrap myself, and then I, I like, double wrap the, the, the uh, what's it called? Like, not the barrel. It's a uh, crate, yeah. I like wrap. Oops, wait, shit. All right, so I wrap the crate. You don't have to dry it out. I know what you're doing. Yeah, it's like one on one. Like I wrap it one loop, then I like move it over and wrap the other loop, and then I, you know, carefully like take it out the elevator, and then I like say, "All right, guys, uh, bring it. This is food." And then just like uh, I guess they start lowering it. Yeah, so I'm just, I just got to make a note here that you're taking all of that right now. So far, we we have there's a crate full of food that we yeah. can all take stuff from. And then yeah. I go and But you're I, taking uh, the whole crate right now. Currently, the crate is being brought down. And I think you're like, taking the whole crate, yeah. Couldn't you yeah, just start I mean, throwing single packs so they can grab it? We don't need all 50 rations. No, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you guys lower it, then you guys take out what we, what you guys think we'll need, like, as much as you can carry, and then I'll, and just lift it up, and then I could put it back in and take out the next crate. Yeah. Uh, and lifting so, stuff up and lowering it down takes a lot of time. All right, then I guess I'll like, just toss A crate of 50 food. packs, is it weighs about as much as you. All right, so should I, should I just be tossing the food at them? Like, here, catch. Yeah, they're they're MRE packs. You can basically like run it over with a bulldozer, and it's still edible. Okay, great. Then I just like I dump out about twenty, fourteen, maybe ten. Go with ten. <laughs> yeah, but like we're not gonna be able to carry all of this and everything else in these crates. So I start I start with ten. I yeah, remember down 10. rations weight according to book. Single ration is one encumbrance, according to Corbo. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I tossed down ten. You uh, maybe max, maybe max like the carrying mule. That's why I can't do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can carry stuff well encumbered. It just reduces your ability to do stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, so now that like I've tossed that, I'm gonna look and see like what's in the next crate over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next two crates are uh, ration. It are ration things again. They're roughly the same amount. One of them's right, well, already had quite a few taken out of it, though. All right. Uh, then I go to like the next one. Like I think instead of like going 
and tossing. I'm just going to, like, open every single one and just see what's there. And, like, if I see it, like, oh, it's rations, then I close it up because I'm like, all right, well, yeah. you know, we already have rations. And I, I leave the ra- one of the rations ones open, but the rest of them are all closed. And I keep going until I see something different. Yeah, if anyone wants to, uh, they can start writing what you guys choose to take into the uh, loot handout, since I know I gave it to everyone. Uh, I'll I'll do it, because I'm already on the page. Um, I'm writing it now. Uh, so, so, 10 rations. And, alright, so now what else do I see? Yeah. Um, after that here, let me see. Just, just check and check. Randomly picking which crate you open in what order. I'm just going down the line. Yeah, the next one, like, you open it, and then you, like, you basically, like, fall over backwards. It's been packed with, um, landmines. Like, not, like, packed-packed. They've been laid out somewhat safely. But there's, yeah, there's you're, about... You guys, you guys toss two landmines down. All right, yeah. I, say we take, I say we take two. Uh, they're yeah, this cr- yeah, this crate has been packed with eight landmines total. And uh, I think, then a I think lot of do. cushioning material. Yeah, I think like I I take some of that cushioning cushioning material and then I uh, and then I uh, I think maybe like I, I I hold them like I set them aside so like when I go down I'll carry them because like I don't want to be tossing down explosives. <laughs> Shh, quiet, you. You you don't know anything. My character's not that dumb. Uh, no. What what else Talk is there? Oh, who somehow is unable to speak out loud once again? We are talking, and I'm gonna disrupt you. Besides, it's not in like. In game, in character, it's off topic. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, taking two. Uh, I'm taking two. I'm gonna carry them. So two landmines. Are they anti infantry or anti tank? They're um, they're universal purpose. So let me just general. Get this ah, up here. two landmines. All right. I mean, uh, like, if we ever need to like hide, like you know, hide the car, then set up some landmines to protect it. And that could be their purpose, to be set the landmines up to, like, protect the car if anything ever happens. Anyways. Yeah, real uh, quick to see, because it doesn't specify in their stat block. Let me find there. Yeah, although I would l- laugh really hard if suddenly uh-huh. DM says that, yeah, in one of the crates you find a uh, suitcase nuke, because I think Sons of Gold book adds that <laughs> item. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you a pocket nuke, sorry. That's fine, we don't need it. We, and I want I want one of the crates to be like a luck save, and then if I roll really well, I just hey look, you find like exactly what you need. You find the the key to the empire. You, you, it means you're king. Great, we win. Yeah, yeah. These are um tech level three mines, so they're basically plastic and solid explosives. So, so they like work as C4. they're both anti they're um they're um, gunnery level weapons, so you can use them on a vehicle. But they individually might not be strong enough to take out a, a vehicle, especially if it's like a tech level four or higher vehicle. All right. So like you could use these on like a drone if the drone decided to go low enough to trigger a mine, but it would be unlikely to actually kill the drone in one hit. All right, yeah. that's that's fine. Not I, even I, talking. I've got them. Like graph I think I'll, into I think... consideration. <laughs> I I'll hold on to them because I am good with my gunnery. So for now, I have them. Um, now, what, what's next? What's the next new thing I find? Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was thinking for the car, or when we like are asleep. Yeah, tie the mines to the uh, front bumper of the car and then ram people. I mean, in another game, Malian would. would it's would it's viable do that. strategy in Battlefield Three. I saw people doing that, like place C4 on the vehicle. Oh yeah, no, that dry. that is literally the strategy. I I just run around on a buggy and then I'd run people over and then I'd like I'd find a tank and then I'd just like blow myself up on it. Okay, you're those people. I understand now. I prefer the running over, but if you see a tank, that's the only thing you can do. Anyways. No, he wasn't. No, in the other game, it's not suicidal. It's it's a uh, sprawl. So like, very cartoonish sometimes. Okay. Anyways, uh, what else is there? Stop that now. Yeah. Oh no. In yeah, in the next crate, there's a um. It's a pack of medical supplies. A lot of this stuff is, like, you don't really know what it's for, and it, like, doesn't look generically useful. 
but you can probably get your hands on another med kit from this, as well as maybe eh, about four Lazarus patches. All right. Uh, I start lowering it. Like I put it, I tie the chain around it, and I start lowering it down because I know, like, I don't know shit about medic stuff. So while they're doing that, I'm continuing to look. But also, how much would a uh, how much would a uh, a mine fetch? Or, like, how much would this stuff fetch? Um, mines aren't really like they're semi valuable, but most of their value is in like production, not in um like market value. All right. Mines, much- tech level three mines, like. Let me see here. What's my modifiers I throw at this thing? Yeah. Tech level 3 mines would probably be worth about, like, 50 each. Alright. Um. Okay, so continuing down, is there anything else I see? Actually, I'm going to end up taking uh, three mi- Excuse me, three mines, just in case. Okay. So I take an extra one, but uh, while, while, I'm lo- while they're lowering down the crate, and I'm up here, I want to see what else is in this these crates. Yeah, um, most of the crates have some more of, like, yeah, a couple more of the crates. They just have, like, generic, like, sort of base building supplies is what I'd call them. There's, like, not insta panels, but there's, like, the mixes for, um, for, um, hydro concrete. The stuff that's, um, it's basically, like, it draws moisture out of the air to, like, yeah, to inflate itself and then generate it's it's tech level four stuff, but it's not really useful to you guys. It's and it's only semi value. It's basically construction material, right? That you'd use. I I kind of how much how heavy is this? Because I kind of want to have like, hey, we could set up a little small outpost for us as like a fallback place. If like something ever happens, we can have some mini outposts that we can just make and hide ourselves if we find a good place. Yeah. So how much would this stuff cost, and how much would it weigh? No, the medical stuff you guys are already lowering down, so you can deal with that. Yeah. yeah. The um hydro concrete, it's each pack of it, like the packs are the size of like a small vacuum tube bag. So it's about yeah, like about a sandbag size if each one. Right. All and right. each one mixes like a big amount of it. Unless so, like, you're planning on, like, spending a long time in this area, you probably don't need to build any bases here. All right, then, yeah, let's just let's just leave it. Let's just... I'll leave it for now. Um, what else do I find? Do I find any weapons, any any parts? Yeah. Let me throw a pin and go back down to the medical stuff real quick. Oh, yeah. Sure. So... Medical stuffs. Let's see here. Who's doing the searching on that? Someone with actual medical training? Yes. <laughs> if I'm still there or I have returned from my administration checking, then I can do it. Yeah. The um yeah, the employee area, it got evacuated. There's like a couple like computer terminals and stuff, but Okay then. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not good at finding s- hidden stuff. So I, unless I see any obvious signs, then I just like, well, uh, hopefully they got something, and then I return. So for checking medical stuff, do you require me to make a check or? Yeah. No. You can because you have medical training. You can probably identify this stuff on your own. Yeah. I'm like, oh. Medical stuff could be useful, and I like with interest. I go through it. Yeah. So there's yeah there's a like okay where is all the stuff for this? Yeah. So there's like a good collection of stuff. You've got um yeah like I said there's enough stuff that you could put together another uh, med kit. But there's also some um some of the kind of emergency stuff. There's like anti allergens. There's a couple. They're not like actually stems, but they're like um, they're like um medical stabilizing carriers. It's um, it's the equivalent of just like saline injection fluid, but you can use it to carry like a nanite, or you could use it to carry like a more medically related stem or something. They're like they're basically blank stems, is what I'd call them. There's quite a few of these, and then the um mixing chemicals for those. You probably couldn't use them, but 
Yeah, I'm not there. really a chemist, to be honest. Yeah, beyond that, there's... let me see here. Okay, because I already have a medkit, I have three Lazarus patches. I believe medkits have a um, qualifier for getting spent, though. Uh, yeah, it's in the book that if I provide long-term um, long -term care, then yeah, I roll... Yeah, it's whenever you, you make a roll with the med kit and you hit a 12, and if you hit a 12, you're gonna, it basically gets become, it gets used up. After each day of granting long-term recuperative care, roll 3d6 per patient treated. On a 12, the kit has run out of some of vital pharmaceuticals and has become useless. Yeah, basically every time you, you heal someone with the med kit, there's about a, yeah, a 1 in 12 chance it gets burned out. Okay, I definitely gather up stuff to make another med kit. Yeah, so and give then, yourself an extra kit. Yeah, I'm renting that out in my uh, equipment. Yeah, there's just generic supplies. For the Are most there part. Lazarus patches? Yeah, there's about four Lazarus patches total. So I'm gonna that take. You can find. So I'm gonna take two. So I have total of five. Yeah, there's um in the base of it, there's a bunch of like kind of technical stuff, and you recognize it's the um components of a bio scanner. The only problem is it looks like it's missing a um one of the like it's like missing one of the primary um technological pieces to it, so you can't actually use it. Uh, I sigh. Well, bio bioscanner could be useful, but I can live without it for now. Last patches and medkits are more uh, viable. Besides, I look at the others. I don't think you have allergies, do you? Oh. Dun, dun, dun. The prodigal son has returned. Well, if nobody says that he has allergies, I'm gonna leave the anti-allergens in the in case in ca cage, not case uh, crate in crate, so that maybe somebody else will require it more. And I'm not a chemist nor anything, so that's the only stuff I take. So I'm like, look at the others. Well, I'm done with this. Uh, you gonna get him in the call, or is he just gonna be hanging out in there? I just added him to the call, hoping that would work. I'm not sure. Skype sometimes not works properly, so sometimes the the one who's hosting the call needs to add a person. Ah. Uh. Sometimes, although maybe not. Well, if you're if you're in the group, if if you're in the group, you can just click the join thing. Ah, uh, he's starting Skype. Might take him a little bit because his Skype's not great. Yeah, um, we can we can keep running. So let's see here. What else is there in the loop? <laughs> yeah, beyond that, there's a um, yeah, there's a couple packs of um. It looks like it's. Once again, it's a couple of these packs have raw supplies in them for the most part. And two of them that you come across, they have... I was about to say Ballistic Weave, and then I'd have to go commit honorable suicide for saying that. But it's um, it's um, Seroplast Fiber. That's been... There we go. There's a sci-fi term I can use safely. Yeah, there's um, yeah, there's a big thing, collection of Seroplast Fibers that have been kind of set up into a... Like woven sheets. This is like the basis people use for woven body armor. Ooh, yeah. No, I'm I'm definitely taking that. I yeah. Feel like, uh, like, are you grabbing all of it, or are you just going to grab like a set amount? How much is in there? Yeah, I'd say there's. I'm trying to think how to describe it in like amounts. Because I just think it's really funny. If there's a lot and it's really light, Don't, I could just no. be like I could just be carrying like a like a big like I could just be in a blanket just running in the desert, just like you can't shoot me. <laughs> We're at the cache right now. 
Uh, it's in an elevator. Oh, sorry, he can't hear us. <laughs> yeah, other person, other person. Uh, all right. So, how much is there in there? Yeah, I'd say. Well, it's it's not light, but there is quite a bit of it. Could I use it as a parachute? If I if I held two corners and used psychic manipulation on the other two corners, could I could I like parachute down with it? Because that'd be pretty awesome to like just jump down like with a parachute. <laughs> I don't think that stuff works in that way. No, I'm going to go with...